Anyways, yeah. I'll show congratulate you on your new appointment. Thank you very much. Uh, we hope this is the beginning of uh, big things to come for you personally. Thank you very much. And also for the party for you are affiliated with. Let's talk about this party you are affiliated <coughs> with, which is the main opposition NDC. Yeah. And their, their you know, promises for the creative arts sector, yeah. if they should be elected into yeah. power. We've seen all these different policies from the, the major parties. Yeah. For the NDC, what's the difference maker? For the creative arts, if you should be elected. Well, the difference maker here is the fact that, I mean, within the past few years, a lot of political parties in the ways they use or leverage the arts has always been to leverage the celebrities of the arts, you mm -hmm. know, and more in terms of narrative influencing or communicating or trying to create a bandwagon effect. Mm -hmm. The difference here is that there's been a new thought leadership dimension to what we're about to do as NDC. Mm -hmm. You know, so when you even take a look at the manifesto, there's a group of industry professionals who are involved. I mean, took I mean uh, feedback and interactions from the industry and factored in, in into the manifesto. And that's the more reason why we call it the People's Manifesto, just so everybody understands that this was driven by the people. We as a party just facilitated it. That's the difference uh, from 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 this one. And it's a it's a it's a it's a it's away from the usual or the norm. Mm. This one is. Mm something that has been well thought through mm. by industry people mm. and obviously together with other policy makers in the manifesto committee mm. and so i mean this is different i mean obviously your policies have been matched boot for boot by the, the ruling party yeah. when it comes to creative arts so let me, let me get some perspectives on what exactly some of these policies that have been out outlined mean one of, one, of, one of them says you implement programs to support the growth of the film music and creative arts uh, industry to drive job creation and economic growth. Uh, what programs exactly are we talking about when you talk about this policy? It, it's, a, it's all encompassing, which includes a lot of support. Uh, mind you, just before we left government in 2016, we passed the Film Development and Classification Bill, mm. uh, which was to bet the National Film Authority and also come with a fund in the ways it was designed by the law. Um, in the last four years, it hasn't quite been that. I mean, we know a lot of you know, officials have been appointed to mm. sort of lead uh, the National Film Authority. Mm. But the root tooling and the funding elements is gone for the National Film Authority. The, the fund that's supposed to stand alone to be able to help industry as well is gone. These are some of the things that we intend to do, to be able to retool and fund and resource the National Film Authority to make it a proper film authority mm. or a regulatory agency in the, in the industry. Mm. And most importantly, create the much-needed fund that the industry needs to be able to help um, alleviate the issues that's in the, in the sector. Mm. So this is just one of the, mm. I mean, many other programs mm. and uh, uh, activities that we want to be able to do mm. to enhance and enable okay. the industry. Let's, let's stay on film and also uh, let, let's talk about the, uh, the policy number seven, which mm. says you want to promote local patronage of various creative products. Um, for me, there has already been a form of a kanka in, in, in the creative art sector, especially when it comes to film, where you see a lot of foreign films being dubbed into local languages for the people to watch. And that for me itself, that it's for a, me in itself, itself is it's a, it's a, it's a huge it's problem. A problem because you. if you're replicating someone's yeah. culture in my local language for yes. me to learn, yes. that yes. doesn't let me appreciate mine and it yes. doesn't progress our culture. Mm. Now, this can come number one. How yes. can this be turned around? And number two, what, what, is, what is the policy? What is the real policy into detail on encouraging the no, interest no, of okay. local creative products? At the core of what we, we are looking to do is to see to the person of the broadcasting bill, for okay. example. And also, I mean, also institute the Media Development Fund. The broadcasting bill in the ways it's been designed has elements that's going to prescribe um, a certain quota for or local content, give an advantage for local content for broadcasting, um, um, broadcasting houses. And most importantly, also that we think that would help to uh, um, bring up to speed or enable private independent uh, or independent content producers as well to be able to help them to produce. But most importantly, we also recognize that Production also comes with funding challenges, and that tomorrow is why we're creating the Media Development Fund, mm -hmm. not only for uh, the media houses to be able to assess to produce some of these much-needed content but do not have uh, the commercial elements to it. For instance, you would recognize that children and women empowerment content are a bit less on, um, on our TV mm -hmm. because the, the complaint or the feedback has always been that it's not too commercially sound for the channels. Mm -hmm. And so usually they, can, they tend to go for that which is commercially sound and that which is not, mm -hmm. you know. So we are thinking of it from a more um, social impact uh, perspective, aside from having to enable these independent content creators mm -hmm. and to be able to bring them up to speed to produce the kind of quality that mm -hmm. 
um, these um, channels want. Mm. We also want to be able to use that to advance the narrative for the vulnerable in society as well. Mm. Determinant is a very powerful mm. um, tool. So you're going back to the broadcasting bill. That's one of the elements that it does. One of the things that the broadcasting bill also does is that you may have heard complaints from particularly the music industry about logging and you know the lack of payment lack of copyright, of copyright oh, payment by yeah. broadcasting houses and everything. It provides a, a sort of a small licensing regime mm. that prescribes that I mean broadcasting houses should be able to pay some of these things. I mean aside from mm. to go hand in hand with the licensing mm. sort of mm. so. It's still in engagement, but in the draft that we've, we've seen mm -hmm. already, that's it. But when we come, we'll take a look at the draft again, do the word stakeholder consultations mm -hmm. with the likes of Geba mm -hmm. and independent content creators to be able to pass something which will empower both the broadcasting space and the independent content co uh, creators mm -hmm. to be able to produce the kind of content that we need that and we that need. will be relevant. That's, that's really incredible. When, when it comes, you, you made mention of children and women's content. Yeah. When it comes to children's content, let me recommend this this animator who has been doing amazing things yeah. and has not gotten any attention for it. Yeah. It's called Powerball. So he so does yeah. great young, exactly. you know, animation. Yeah. So, so such people, for, for instance, people, the, yeah. the Media Development Fund mm. goes to be able to help such people as well. So also produce. because of the fact that okay. it, that, that what they do often do not have commercial um, element to it in yeah. terms of what yeah. they are trying to do. Yeah. So yeah. they may suffer. So, mm. but if you have a Media Development Fund in place, mm. both the television channel or the broadcasting house and the independent and independent content cre uh, creator they are looking to partner with they can collaborate. Some, some funds to be able to, 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 to collaborate know, to with some of these content to stay i mean on top Sounds of the laudable. Yeah. Uh, the policy number 15 says the structure the ed educational curriculum to allow students <laughs> to appreciate the relevance of culture and creative arts in life and in national development yes. you and i have studied uh, yeah. uh, uh, cultural studies yeah. Yeah. Ba back yeah. in yeah. a back, back in the day but curriculum it's, it's changed now. <laughs> and uh, also social yeah. studies yeah. all that Th those in my opinion did did not we're not we're not a home run when it comes yeah. to appreciating our culture yeah. into detail yes. and also being proud as a people. Yeah. What's going to be different about this educational reform this time and, and the structure of it? That's we, gonna we recognize that there's been a sort of a flip flop on creative arts. Mm -hmm. I mean, from <coughs> excuse me, successive governments. Mm -hmm. I mean, one government comes and the curriculum changes. They say, oh, creative arts is not important. Another comes and says it's important, but treat it more as a hobby or treat it more as a mm -hmm. extracurricular activity, mm -hmm. more like it. But we want to be able to make it, mainstream it as much as possible within the educational system from the basic level so that young people coming up that have an interest or that mm -hmm. do, do look up to people like mm -hmm. myself and you mm -hmm. would be able to harness that particular interest and the passion from an early age mm -hmm. but appreciating it so they can go over. I mean, I ended up in the creative arts industry also because I had tutors who from the basic, age, from the basic stage mm -hmm. were so concerned about Oh, we're trying to help me. I was involved in some entertainment or related activities mm. right from the basic school and then secondary school as well and all of that. So right from there, my appreciation of it helped me to be able to, and obviously because of the mentors that I had at the point in time, mm. helped me to better appreciate and, I mean, decide to, to make to a be career a, out a of, part this. of this. So industry. that's one of the things that we're looking to because mm. we recognize that the creative economy is a very, very vast I mean, economy Huge. that has the potential to create a lot more wealth and jobs for people. Huge. Perhaps a lot of people do not understand when we say what the creative economy is. The creative economy spans advertising, public relations, events management, broadcasting, mm -hmm. I mean, media, yeah. um, digital, uh, uh, all this interactive digital stuff, Flat art and crafts, yeah. fashion. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I mean, the Fashion and Dressmakers Association of Ghana, for instance, have more than 50,000 members. Oh, Almost huge. every corner, you would have somebody who is a seamstress or so or something. All of these things are, 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 are all part of the creative economy. And we want to be able to, I mean, put in the right okay. things as a matter of state policy mm. to drive and enable it. Mm. Great perspective, Sadiq. Uh, yeah. I, I just got sent a screenshot here. It's a Facebook message from, uh, it's a Facebook uh, uh, post from yeah. Fred Chaymans. I says, yeah. my MPP kindly delegates <coughs> myself, uh, Chaymans, uh, uh, Chrissy Ernest and uh, Dada KD, aka Dada Kokuria, to communicate on your behalf <laughs> for the creative arts. If these people are uh, 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 <laughs> selected to communicate for the ruling party, would it be too much of a challenge for you? Three people? No, 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 it's not. I mean, in fact, I mean, if you recognize, I don't know, but, uh, well, I, d I don't want to jump to conclusion to say that the MPPs, uh, people that work with the creative arts or creative economy have been running away from us. Yeah. But within the past few weeks, almost all the media engagements that 
we've been writing. You think they have been running away from you? But I mean, from the from what the producers are saying, of these shows are saying, um, I, you would one would, would come to such one a conclusion. One would come to such a conclusion. Yeah, I, but, I, mean, I, I don't think that I don't think that I mean this would run out for no. Mark, okay. Mark, for instance, is a very top notch guy, a very professional okay. guy with a lot okay. of insight. Mark will never run away from a debate. Okay. I mean, so great as well. I want to thank you, I perhaps think what, that What's going to happen is... I perhaps uh, think that they are just disappointed in their party for enabling the, <laughs> the ad space so, for four years. Sending so definitely else, <laughs> but what's going to happen is that when the, the new patriotic party appoints someone to speak on their behalf when it comes to creative art, we will sit there and we'll make it happen. After the break, I'm back with Jackie. This is expressive.